Okay. Rabotai. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, or good evening. It depends when you're seeing this. But at the end of the day, we are continuing with something that's very, very crucial and important, and that is, Chutz Nikim teaches about cruelty. And we have a story in, we know, about Shaul HaMelech. King Saul, right? Shaul HaMelech. What was his... What would you say that he was supposed to do is kill all the Amalek? Everybody. Don't have mercy. Don't. However, he left King Agag. He left the King Agag. And through that came Haman. And through that, we know the whole, the whole situation that the Jews don't... But you see from there, sometimes a person has to understand the Rasha, if it was a Rasha, and he was told to do something, it might look and feel cruel, but if not, a person will have to pay the consequence later on. i tell you a true story that happened to my daughter yesterday. Yesterday she went to the dentist. She's four, four and a half years old, five years old. She got four cavities and she has to have a root canal. I'm like, what? She's four years old. Four and a half years old, what's going on? It's on the baby teeth, like what's going on? So we didn't understand, like she, she brushes her teeth, you know what I'm saying, she's a little kid, you know? You get her that, uh, what's going on? Figured out, figured it out that one person, you know, was always giving her candy. Always like, you know those sucking candy, like those taffy candies? So every day, every, every single day, she would be good, whatever it is, maybe like in class or something like that. She did the, the tea, whoever it was, I don't know who it was, gave a kick. We figured it out later. And it was getting stuck. Now, you tell a person, don't give your child candy. You know, oh, that sounds like, what kind of, what kind of daddy is that? Who, which father and mother don't give the... But at the end of the day, it's, it, it's the biggest hesed that you could do. Yeah, you hold away candy from your child, and they go crazy. Ah, you're the worst daddy, you're the worst mommy, come on, what's wrong with you, come on. But at the end of the day, if you give in and be merciful in that situation, your child's going to have to suffer later on. It's the same thing in everything in life. If a person, let's say, spoils a child. Daddy, I want this. Okay, no problem. Here, here. Daddy, I want that. No problem. Here, daddy, I want that. The child grows up, he doesn't know what the meaning of no is. What's no? What do we know? And later on when he gets older, or he gets into business, or anything like that, or whatever he's going to do in life, and the person says no, he doesn't understand what that means. What does no mean? Because what? The, father, the parent, whatever it is, spoiled everything you want. Take, 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 take. Sometimes you got to um, pull back a drop to train the child. Ah, he's going to make a whole fuss. Blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, it's going to help the child's character. You understand what I'm trying to say? So that's what he's telling you. He's telling you at the end of the day, it's not type of cruelty. It's sometimes it's, it's cruel to be mercy. It's sometimes it's cruel to be mercy. All right? Let's say you have an alcoholic, let's say. Guy's drinking, whatever. There's that, that, that. And you know he's off alcohol, right? But now he wants one more drink. And you know this guy, if you give him a drink, he's going to go crazy. He's going to have to probably go hospitalized. And he's screaming, give me a shot, give me a drink, give me this, give me that, give me that. You know the guy, he's going to go, if he starts, he's going to go. So he said, I have to have mercy on the guy. The guy's going crazy. He just wants to let me give him a drink. But later on, you know what's going to happen? The outcome is going to happen. And therefore, you have to understand. This is what, I want to read you what the Kohelet says. It's so important what the Kohelet says. It says, he quotes, This is Kohelet Rabbah, by the way. Kohelet Rabbah, Perek Zayin, Lamir Gimel. The Midrash in the Kohelet. It says, If you become merciful in a place where you're supposed to be cruel, at the end you'll be cruel in a place where you have to be merciful. Meaning to say, you're using the character trait wrong. 
Sometimes a person has to have his foot down. Excuse me, this is not, we, this is not, this is not what we do. This is not happening. Ah, uh, yeah, the kid is going to have a go wild. You're not giving him candy. Or the person is going to go wild. You're not giving him a shot of alcohol. Or whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, a person must understand in advance that sometimes a person has to, has to put his foot down. Sometimes in order, for, in order, that is the real mercy. That is the real Achmanut. And if Shaul Amalek, think about it, if Shaul Amalek put his foot down by Agag, I'm not having mercy on the King Agag, we would never have Aman. But I'm trying to bring out a point. I'm trying to bring out one point. That in, the, in life, a person has to understand sometimes, and each to his own. You have to apply it where you have to apply it. I don't know. You have to apply it, you know your life, and you have to apply it in your life. Right? I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Let's say you own a company. I'll give you an example. Let's say you own a company. Yeah, and, and you have a worker, and he's always constantly coming late. But you feel bad for the guy because at the end of the day, you, you're supporting him, and without you, the person might not have a parnasa or anything like that. But sometimes the guy's he's not taking a lesson, and then you might put your foot down so strong, and the guy will learn his lesson. Excuse me, you come late three more times, you out of the company. All of a sudden, oh, he feels like, why are you so mean? What's going on? And no, you come late. You'll see the guy will be there every single time. Right? I, in the beginning, it might be tough on you to be tough. It might be hard for you to be tough. But at the end of the day, sometimes you have to use, you have to use the toughness. Good? Now, he says, sometimes you've got to be cruel on your body in order to do what Hashem wants. The lawyer, he writes, be cruel on your body. To do the will of Hashem. Don't go with your body and say, Oh yeah, my body is tired, he's not in the mood. Don't go with your body and say, Oh yeah, my body is not in the mood. Let me tell you something. So let's say for example, a guy, he comes, he's coming to the Shi'ur Torah. He's coming to Shi'ur Torah to learn Torah. Now he's sitting down to learn. Now sometimes the, 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 the body will feel lazy. The body itself will feel like, oh, I'm not in the mood to really pay attention to the Gemara right now, or to anything. Or let's say a lady, she's cooking for Shabbat. She's tired, she's, she's just like, she's just like, it's very hard for her to push to cook for Shabbat. You know, it's hard for a lady to cook for Shabbat. You ever cook for Shabbat? You ever, cook, you ever try cooking for Shabbat? Sit in the kitchen all day, in the kitchen from Friday in the morning till uh, 2 o'clock. You're baking challah, you're baking desserts, you're making the appetizers, you're making lahmajin, you're making, you're making the dips, hummus, tchina, you're making all this. It's hard. You got to work hard. You got to appreciate it. Now you come on the Shabbat day, but you thank your mother, thank your wife. Wow, thank you so much. What a Shabbat meal you did. You work so hard. I get, what do we do, the men? We come, we say, Kiddush, we eat. An hour, half hour, done, half hour, 40 minutes, hour, two hours, whatever it is. Meanwhile, the lady was schwitzing in the kitchen, sweating it out, opening up the oven, opening up the vent, opening up the window, getting all the air out. <laughs> the whole morning, she's cooking from Thursday night to Friday morning, going crazy. And the children making sure, cutting the potatoes, making this. <laughs> we come, we eat, oh, delicious, great, great, great delicious. <laughs> You gotta appreciate, you gotta appreciate. So it's hard work sometimes for a woman to go ahead and cook. And sometimes a lady might be feeling tired and there's that. You want your food to come out good, you gotta work on it. You know, you can't be lazy. You gotta work! You gotta work on it. So sometimes a person might say, ah, I'm not in the mood, I'm tired, I'm this, I'm that. He's telling you in that situation, push yourself a little bit in that moment. Of course, have your rest, of course, do your thing. But you're fully rested, you're fully, sometimes you still feel like, Ah, I don't want to like, exert myself so much. No, 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 no. Be cruel on your body sometimes and exert yourself. It's a strong word that he writes, right? Cruel on your body. Like it's like, what, what kind of thing is that? Aghzari al gufo, he says. Be cruel on your body. You know, you have to push a little bit. You have to push. Sometimes I sit there, I'm like, I got to learn this amount of hours today. I'll give you an example. I come in, first say that I'm about to sit down, open up the Gemara. I'm about to learn. I'm like, my, my head's thing, my, my head's pounding like, I'm going to sit and be able to learn all this amount of hours today. Like, I'm feeling weak. I'm feeling tired. No, no, push. Push. Oh, yeah, you're right. You, you, need a little, you need a little break? Take your break. We're not saying don't take a break. But you already took your break. And you already slept the amount of time that you're supposed to sleep. And you're still feeling not in the mood? You, now you have to push. 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 Exert yourself. 
Even a woman, sometimes she say, oh, I, had, I have uh, I don't know, this amount of children. I have not ch- she has to push, right? right? She might have, I don't know how many children. But you know what another child is in life? You know what another child is? Then she's thinking, oh, go through the nine months, have the baby, wake up in the middle of the night, feed the baby, da 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 Push yourself. That one child, whoever you're having, every mitzvah that that child does is in your merit. Every mitzvah. You could be in Shammai with 120 and your child is giving you gifts every single day. You wake up from Shammai after, oh, what happened? Uh, they're moving you up in Gan Eden. Why are they moving me up in Gan Eden? Because you had an extra child, that child, right? They had extra, remember you push yourself a little bit. All right, honey, let's do one more child. Yeah! And guess what? That child now, he's doing mitzvot, right? Whether boy, whether girl, learning Torah, uh, doing chesed. So that's because of you. It's because of you, you got to get the reward. So they lift you up, 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 up. What are you doing over here? I'm good. No, you yeah, had a child became big chacham. Really me? Yeah. Imagine he said, oh, imagine you stopped at the last one. I don't have enough. Oh, ever. You know, think about it. Oh, you had that child. Oh my goodness. And now in Chamaim, they're giving you crazy reward. They're giving you gifts and gifts and gifts because every single child, you have to understand, I'm not joking when I tell you this. It's the biggest, like keep your whole in a million years, but like you're getting dividends and dividends and dividends and dividends and dividends and dividends for eternity. For eternity. Imagine now that child has children. Now that's all because you had that extra child. So isn't it a great opportunity? I we know it's hard. The body might be difficult. You could push. You know what I'm saying? As long as healthy, of course, but push a little bit. You now one guy tells, oh, my wife said, till 30, haven't any kids. After 30, I'm stopping. What are, you, what, are you, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, she's very healthy, very healthy, strong, strong. What's, what's going on? Doctor says, get with your doctor. So what's going on? No, I don't want to push Rabbi. Yeah, I wake up in the morning, night, the baby bottle. <laughs> so for two years, wake up in the baby bottle, you get an add in for eternity for every single mitzvah. Think about it. Look at your great grandmother. Stop for a second and think about your great grandmother. Stop for a second. Stop right now. Go back. You, your, take your mother's grandmother. Stop, think. My mother's grandmother. I'm thinking now. She probably has 200 at least. 200 people that came out of her. 200. Zero, zero. I'm not kidding you. Think about your own grandmother. Right? Think about it logically. A person has, let's say, I don't know, this amount of kids. Those kids have kids. Those kids have kids. Two, that one kid has from them. I remember one person came over to me. He was already 85. He told me he has a hundred kids that came out of him. Because he had, I don't know, 11 kids. I don't know what he had. And each one of those kids had, and he, now those kids are having kids. Yeah, I don't know. You, you understand what I'm trying to say? That one child, you know how much children could come produce from that one child? You might not see it now, but you understand? Is that clear? Clear. So that's what he's telling you over here. Push yourself a little bit. Do as much, because you have to understand life is so short. It's 120 years, but people, you have to understand, it goes by quick, 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 quick. And therefore, hustle, even though you might not be in the mood, take your body and be a little bit cruel to your body and say, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm not in the mood, I'm going to do it anyway. And like that, you're going to have a lot of, definitely a lot of, it's going to happen 100%. This is, this is today's lesson.